Hi, my name is Ron Foster. I'm the associate pastor here at Mariner's Church. Welcome to the Journey to the Cross Good Friday experience. We're so glad that you are taking the time as an individual or as a family or as a group to go through this experience together online. We hope that you're encouraged by it as we walk through really the last week leading up to the cross. Now, some things to keep in mind as you go through this experience today. One is to take your time. You know, uh, this isn't a race. If at any point you want to stop and, and pause the video, please make sure to do that. You know, you're not trying to rush through this. It's something to really just take your time, pray through, read the scriptures, and go at your own pace. So as you go through this, um, maybe after each segment, you might want to consider pausing the video so that you can discuss how that makes you feel or, or some thoughts that come to mind as you've just read the scriptures talking about that experience of Jesus. So as you go through this, let's have a great experience together. The first stop on our journey is Jesus is coming. This last Sunday is what we commonly call Palm Sunday. Jesus was arriving in the city of Jerusalem and a crowd was waiting. If you're not familiar with this title, where it came from, let's look at the passage from Matthew chapter 21, verses 7 through 11. They brought the donkey and the colt and put on them their cloaks, and he sat on them. Most of the crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. And the crowds that went before him and that followed him were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord! Hosanna in the highest! And when he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred up, saying, Who is this? And the crowd said, This is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee. Try to imagine this scene. The crowd that gathered started shouting some very interesting things. By shouting Hosanna to the son of David, the people were not only giving praise to Jesus, but also recognizing Jesus to be the Messiah and their king. Think about the atmosphere of people's excitement in this moment, their belief, their doubt. Maybe some had gathered just to see what was going on. How do you think you would have responded in the crowd that day? The second stop on our journey is Jesus is betrayed. Jesus had 12 men that were his disciples. They followed him everywhere. They participated in everything. Jesus even sent them out in pairs to get their feet wet. And yet Jesus knew ahead of time that one of the 12 would turn against him. One of the twelve would turn him over to be killed. Take a look at Matthew chapter 26, 14 through 16. Then one of the twelve, whose name was Judas Iscariot, went to the chief priests and said, What will you give me if I deliver him over to you? And they paid him thirty pieces of silver. And from that moment he sought an opportunity to betray him. According to the professional coin grading service, the 30 pieces of silver that was offered to Judas would be equal to about 950 U.S. dollars. This was quite a significant sum of money back then, and this amount of money would be enough to buy a small farm. These days, that could equate to about $240,000. It's very interesting to think about the amount in those terms and one can't help think, would I sell Jesus out for an offer like that? Seriously, think about it. The other disciples certainly did. The disciples wondered if they would be capable of such a thing. As you go to the next stop, think about this. Jesus knew who would betray him already, and yet he still treated Judas with love. How amazing is that? 
The next stop on our journey is Jesus' Last Supper. On Jesus' last evening with his disciples, before he would be arrested, he would spend an intimate time with them that surrounded itself around the Passover. Take a look at Jesus' experience below from Matthew 26, 20 through 29. When it was evening, he reclined at the table with the twelve. And as they were eating, he said, Truly I say to you, one of you will betray me. And they were very sorrowful and began to say to him, one after another, Is it I, Lord? He answered, He who has dipped his hand in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would have been better for that man if he had not been born. Judas, who would betray him, answered, Is it I, Rabbi? He said to him, You have said so. Now as they were eating, Jesus took bread, and after blessing it, broke it, and gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink again of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus was letting the disciples know of his suffering to come and his invitation for them to one day be a part of what he would accomplish through it. Think of the intimacy of sitting around a table with Jesus and ask yourself, when was the last time I just talked with God? What is stopping me now? Why not spend some time talking now before moving on to the next stop? The next stop on our journey is Jesus prays. Jesus knew what was coming. As his hour was approaching, the one thing that he thought to do was to go talk to his father with his closest friends. Let's see what he prayed in Matthew 26, 36 to 50. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. And take, taking with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee, he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, my soul is very sorrowful, even to death. Remain here and watch with me. And going a little farther, he fell on his face and prayed, saying, My father, if it be possible, let this cup pass from me. Nevertheless, not as I will, but as you will. And he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, So could you not watch with me one hour? Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, for the second time, he went away and prayed, My father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words again. Then he came to the disciples and said to them, Sleep and take your rest later on. See, the hour is at hand, and the Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Rise, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. While he was still speaking, Judas came, one of the twelve, and with him a great crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the temple. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him. Even though Jesus was afraid of what was ahead, he still came to the conclusion that he would follow through with God's will. Are we as willing to do the same? The next stop on our journey is Jesus suffers. After Jesus was arrested, he endured extreme suffering and humiliation at the hands of men. As he endured all of this, he had you on his mind. Keep this in mind as 
we read of the suffering from several selected passages in Scripture. Matthew 26, 67 and 68 says, Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, you Christ, who is it that struck you? Matthew 27, 26, Then he released for them Barabbas, and having scourged Jesus, delivered him to be crucified. Matthew 27, 27 to 32, Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole battalion before him, and they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him. And twisting together a crown, kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe, and put his own clothes on him and led him away to crucify him. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. Matthew twenty-seven thirty-five. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them by casting lots. John 19, 32 to 34. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the first And of the other who had been crucified with him, and when they came to Jesus and saw that he was already dead, they did not break his legs. But one of the soldiers pierced his side with a spear, and at once there came out blood and water. The next stop in our journey is Jesus dies. After Jesus suffered all these horrible beatings and humiliation and having had his hands and his feet nailed to the cross, he hung there slowly and painfully fading. For the first time, Jesus felt the pain of sin and the consequence of it as he was now becoming the payment for all of man's sin. It was at this point that Jesus also experienced the separation from God that comes as a result of sin. Let's read Matthew 27, 45 to 50 in John 19, 30. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani? That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed, and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, Wait, Let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. When John had received, sorry, when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. John 19.30 indicates what Jesus shouted at the end. The term, it is finished, was not a weak, giving up cry, but rather that of a soldier, after gaining the victory, would use these words as a cry of victory. Jesus had succeeded in what he came to do, to give up his life so that we might have life. It is finished. The next stop on our journey is communion. We want to invite you to take part of the very ordinance that Jesus began the night of his arrest. As you observed in the passage at the Last Supper stop along the journey, this was something Jesus put in place for those that are following him. This wasn't to insult anyone or to leave anyone out, but rather give the followers of Jesus something to regularly do to remember, to thank and to praise Jesus for all that he has done for us. If you're taking part of communion today, here are some guidelines to follow. First, take a time of silent prayer. Ask God to reveal any unconfessed sin, and then confess it to him. Ask for forgiveness today. Along with that prayer, thank Jesus for what he did on the cross for you. Think about this journey and all that Jesus went through for you. 
Read the scripture from 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 26 that we're going to show in just a minute. As you take the bread, think about the physical pain that Jesus suffered and endured because of his love for you. And as you take the juice, think about the blood that Jesus shed that covers our sins and now allows us to be presented to the Father, cleansed and white as snow. At the end, pray again, thanking God for who he is and what he has done. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three through 24 says, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take some time right now to take part of that bread. Verses 25 and 26 go on to say, In the same way also he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Take some time right now and drink the cup. The last stop of our journey is the rest of the story. The story doesn't end here. We want to invite you back this Sunday at 1030 a.m. for our Easter celebration, the Resurrection Sunday, to hear about the rest of the story. You know, take some time to read the passage from Matthew 28, 1 through, t- 1 through 9 for the rest of the story. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb, and behold, there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus who was crucified. He is not here, for he is risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee. There you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. You see, we serve a risen Savior. The God of the Bible is not dead, but alive. The thing that is so amazing about this story is that the angel rolled the stone away. Why did he do that if Jesus was already gone? You see, he didn't roll the stone away so that he could let Jesus out. He rolled it away so that we could see in what a mighty God we serve. Again, we want to invite you this Sunday at 1030 uh, to Mariner's Church. We would love to have you for, for this Easter celebration service. And if you can't make it, of course, We will be live streaming it at marinerschurch.com, or if you have the Mariner's Church app, it will be there available as well. Thanks for taking the time for this journey uh, to, to join in with us. We hope to see you on Sunday. It was a different kind of Passover, to say the least. Uh, I remember right when we sat down, Philip leaned over to me and he whispers, Hey, Thomas, I feel like something special is going to happen tonight. (laughs) I looked at him. I said, I doubt it. I was wrong. (laughs) Jesus got up from the table. He he walked over and grabbed a basin of water and a towel. I remember at the time thinking to myself, What's Jesus doing with the foot water? You know, I doubt he's going to wash somebody's feet. (laughs) I was wrong. He knelt down and began to wash Bartholomew's feet. Bart just sat there. He, uh, He didn't say anything. He didn't move. None of us did. 
Jesus finished and went on to James and Andrew and the rest of us. I remember at the time thinking, this is so strange, yet wonderful. And then I thought, I doubt anybody's going to say anything right now. I was wrong. You know who broke the silence. Peter. No way you're going to wash our feet. I mean, that's what I told him. He could wash other people's feet, but he wasn't going to wash mine. I looked at him and I said, Jesus, you're not going to wash our feet. I mean, you're the king. And he looked at me and he said, well, then you can have nothing to do with me. And I'm like, ouch. Okay, wash my feet, wash my hands, wash my whole body if you have to. He looked at me and said, no, your feet will be fine, Peter. In the midst of him washing our feet, he teaches us servanthood. Then Jesus took some bread and some wine. He blessed it and he served it to us. He said it was uh, a new covenant with his blood. And he said, um, tonight all of you will lose faith in me. I remember thinking right then, lose faith in you? Never. But I didn't say anything. I just sat there. I couldn't just sit there, I had to say something, so I looked at him and I said, Jesus, I love you, you can count on me. Everybody else may fall away, but I will not. You can count on me. He looked at me and he smiled and he said, Peter, you'll deny me three times before tomorrow morning. Ouch. The next thing I knew, we were wrapping things up and we were headed to the garden to pray. Once we got to the garden, um, it's, it just got crazy. Um, Jesus asked Peter, James, and myself to go further in the garden with him and pray, and we did. We tried. We kept falling asleep. Um, Jesus kept waking us up. I remember one time he said, the spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. That's true. It's all a blur. Uh, <laughs> I think this whole mess got started because of Judas. Did he really think what he was doing was right? There. There he is. He's the one you want. The one praying by himself. Now the others, they will come up and try to create some scene. But the one that I kiss on the cheek, that's the one you want. Now 30 pieces of silver, right? That's what we agreed upon. 30 pieces. Forget about the rest. The one that I kiss on the cheek, that's the one you want. A kiss? Judas betrays Jesus with the kiss of a friend? Uh, and then it, it got crazy. Uh, Peter, <laughs> Peter grabs a sword and he, he cuts off this guy's ear. And Jesus, Jesus just reached down and picked it up and put it right back on the guy's head as if nothing had happened. And then, um, and then they took him. I'd love to tell you that we fought for him, but we didn't. Everyone ran. I ran. I'm so ashamed. What have I done? What have I done? Was I so stupid to think that... I've killed him. I've killed him. I've crucified Jesus. I crucified Jesus. It's what the crowd wanted and that's what they got. And personally, I don't feel like that man did anything to deserve that, but I was just a soldier doing my job. When the governor gave his sentence, that's when I would go to work. I loved that job. I felt like I was administering justice every time I nailed someone to a tree. But that man, that man didn't deserve that. Didn't make sense to me. It makes no sense. There I was, rotting in a jail cell, for stealing, murdering. You name it, I've done it. 
And I knew the next time I stepped foot outside that jail cell, well, I mean, that was it. So the guards, they came and got me, and they put me beside this guy that was beaten to a pulp. Then Governor Pilate started asking the crowd, which one of these men do you want me to set free? I mean, it was obvious. I mean, the crowd, they're going to say, let Jesus go. And then I was going to tell them where they could go. And then the crowd, they started chanting Barabbas. I mean, I mean, they were saying my name. They were saying my name over and over and over again. The guards, they threw me to the crowd and, and, they, and they took Jesus to Golgotha. I mean, I mean one minute I, I am a man marked for death and then the next I'm, I'm free. It made no sense. So I followed him all the way to Golgotha. I was stationed at Golgotha that day we just raised the second criminal when they brought him to me. I'll never forget the way he looked. He'd been beaten, spit on, whipped. He was unrecognizable as a man. Hideous. What was left of his clothes were stripped off of him and he was thrown down on the cross. That's when I went to work. Generally, when you crucify a man, the first hand is the most difficult. The criminal wants to get away, he fights you. So I would have two soldiers hold him down, but this guy, he didn't put up a fight. I just thought he was exhausted. As an executioner, I've been called every name in the book. I've had men yell at me, plead with me. But I wasn't prepared for that. He looked at us. He looked at me. And he said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. He forgave me. Forgive them. He said, forgive them. Who is he? Forgive. It should have been me up there. I was the one that was supposed to be hanging on that cross. He took my place. Then I looked up, and I remember he took a uh, deep, agonizing breath, and he said, it is finished. And then, he died. Surely. This man was the son of God. <laughs>